As Paul installs this large window into the shed wall, it becomes a portal to the granite boulder countryside outside and the sunlight streams in, casting a spotlight over the kitchen sink. And it reminds me that our journey has been a tapestry of trials and triumphs. Our shed that was once just a shelter has transformed into a shouse or a shome, a sanctuary we now call home. Paul's just measuring up the shape and the size of the window here on the shed wall. And now he's drilling some holes into the corners of the measurements. This window feels like a symbol of change. It's breathing life into this shouse. And the air crackles with anticipation as though the universe itself is conspiring to bring forth a new beginning. Paul uses a chalk line to create a straight and level line for the measurements of the window. He's just put a screw in each of the holes in the corner, just temporarily to help create that chalk line. So when you've got the chalk line in the correct position and it's secure at both ends, then basically you just grab the string and snap it back to the surface so that it leaves behind that line of chalk. Then that chalk line makes it easy to follow for tasks such as cutting open the shed wall. And Paul's using an angle grinder to cut open the shed wall. Here goes. Let's hope he knows what he's doing. It's probably a good idea to wear a face shield if you're doing this kind of work to protect your eyes and your face from flying debris and sparks and dust and that sort of thing. Earplugs or earmuffs to protect your ears is also a must. You should wear heavy duty work gloves as well to protect your hands from any sharp edges or sparks or something like that. And with an angle grinder, you just got to make sure that you've got the right disc that's designed for the material that you're going to be using it for. For instance, in this one, we're making sure we've got one that's you use for metal. So when you first use the angle grinder, just gently touch the grinding disc to the workpiece, ensuring that the grinder is not at an angle. And then you just start with light pressure and gradually increase it as needed. You should keep the grinder away from flammable materials and work in a well ventilated area. Practice makes perfect, so just start small and controlled and then until you become familiar with the tool's operation and feel. Paul's just doing the last cut along the top now. Each careful incision echoes through the quiet, making the birth of a portal to a world unseen. So when holding an angle grinder, you should also use both hands. So keeping a firm and comfortable grip, you place one hand on the handle and the other on the body of the grinder. And make sure you're standing in a stable and balanced position.
the chair. Cut my fingers. And now for the unveiling. As the scorching summer sun blazes overhead, this decision to put in this large window has transformed the confines of this space. It would invite the outdoors in, turning our shelter into a haven, a haven with a view. A moment of transformation unfolds as the window takes place in the wall. With a flood of light it spills into the once dim space revealing a beauty that lies just beyond the walls the window welcomes the cool breeze carrying with it the sweet fragrance of eucalypts and the distant promise of rain now paul begins the delicate dance of craftsmanship to put the actual window frame into place so while Paul is doing this, I just wanted to let you know some exciting news. And that's thanks to all of you guys, our amazing community. We are actually being invited to the YouTube Partner Program for partial monetizing opportunities. And for us, this is a milestone that we never dreamed would be even possible when we first started documenting our off-grid journey. From our very humble beginnings of having a shower and toilet tent that would blow over in the wind to now, we're on the cusp of unlocking some new possibilities and it's been one incredible journey. We still need 380 more subscribers to actually get into the full um, partner program, but we know that we'll get there eventually, but we just wanted to acknowledge how much we appreciate you. Your comments, your likes, your shares, they've been our motivation and our fuel to keep pushing forward. You've shared our triumphs and laughed at our challenges and celebrated every little step of the way with us. And now as we stand on the threshold of this new chapter, we just wanted to make sure that we expressed our deepest gratitude to you. So thank you so much for being part of our community. Thank you for believing in our journey. Thank you for helping us get to this point. We're not just a channel, we're a family. And we're beyond excited to see where this adventure takes us next. We're just getting started and we're so grateful to have you by our side. So once Paul has these sides in the correct position, he's screwing them from the outside in. And he's using his impact driver to get these screws in into the wall. So if you don't know, an impact driver is a powerful tool designed for driving screws and fasteners with more force and efficiency than the traditional cordless drill. It's really useful for driving large or long screws into tough materials like wood or metal. So the key feature of an impact driver is the impact mechanism. Unlike a regular drill, an impact driver uses a combination of rotational force and concussive blows to drive the screws in more effectively. They're more comfortable to use for extended periods and they're less likely to cause wrist strain or fatigue. So now to put in place the final piece of the frame. So to get this frame in the actual window hole, Paul had to actually dismantle the window frame because he wouldn't have been able to fit it in the hole um, without pulling it all apart first. So now Paul is going to use the caulking gun to apply silicon to all the edges, especially under the flashing. The silicon is flexible and durable and resistant to moisture and temperature extremes. 
So now Paul is putting some flashing on the top of the window. So flashing is like the material, the system that sometimes gets put in a window to prevent water and moisture from entering into the actual building. So flashing is meant to help direct the water away from the window and the surrounding structure so it protects against water damage and potential leaks. So the primary purpose is to create a barrier that channels water away from vulnerable areas such as the joints and seams and where water could potentially penetrate. So this is really important for maintaining the integrity of the building and to make sure that there's no rot, mould and water damage and that sort of thing. And at the moment it's not really too much of an issue for us but later on down the track we're hoping to get like proper walls put into the inside of the shed. So it will be important at that point. And even now to protect our kitchen cupboards that we have there and also the carpet on the floor. And as Paul stands back to admire his handiwork, a sense of accomplishment washes over him and much like the cool relief that now fills the shed. So Paul's just filling all the gaps between the flashing and the shed wall with some silicon just to have that additional layer of protection from water damage. Paul's just get, getting that caulking gun ready for applying the silicon. So the silicon just seals all the gaps. So there is a specific type of silicon sealant for designed especially for window sealing as well. So when you're getting a new cartridge for the silicon you need to use a utility knife or scissors to cut the tip of the silicon cartridge at a 45 degree angle. The size of the cut will determine the size of the bead of the silicon that comes out. Apply a steady even pressure on the trigger while moving the gun along the seam. So now the flashing goes in. So Paul uses the impact driver to screw the flashing in from the inside out this time. And now he's just using the silicon or the caulking gun to seal up any gaps. So he's just smoothing out the silicon with his finger, which actually not only enhances the appearance but also ensures better adhesion and sealing. Silicon can be difficult to clean once it's cured so it's best done while it's still wet. And you should usually let your silicon cure for about 24 hours or more but just check the manufacturer's instructions. Paul's doing some silicon on the outside as well. And now for installing the actual sliding windows into the frame. They're a bit heavy and sticky at the moment, so we might have to get some sort of lubricant in there as well. In this sun-drenched corner of the Australian wilderness, a simple act of craftsmanship has breathed new life into the old, creating a sanctuary where light, air and nature converge 